Frank from Maiden Lake, and today I'm here with Dr. Jamie Ellis from the University of Florida BLAM. We're going to ask him a few questions about him, about what he does, what he brings, and he and his organization bring to the beekeeping community here in Florida. So, Dr. Ellis, first tell me a little, a little bit about you and what you do. Sure. So, Frank, I work at the University of Florida now. I'm a professor of entomology there. I've been at University of Florida 17 years, but, but I kind of go a little bit further back than that with beekeeping. I started keeping bees when I was 12 years old. I'm from Georgia originally. I'm 46 now, so I've been working with bees for over three decades. And so it was a hobby for me initially, but like most people, when you get into it, you can't stop. And when I went to the University of Georgia, I'm like, you know, this is absolutely what I want to do. Bee research, bee science, work with beekeepers, travel the world, study bees. I couldn't think of a better position. So I've been doing that ever since. So when you took this position, what, what does it entail? What does you do now? So the University of Florida is a land-grant institution. That means its faculty members do research, or they teach, or they do extension, or they do some combination of the three. I actually have a three-way split, so I have to do some research, some teaching, and some extension. And I'll explain extension first because most people know what research and teaching is, but right. struggle with extension. If you think about teaching as teaching individuals who are paying for a degree, students, bachelor students, master student, PhDs, extension is teaching everyone else. So in theory, this video that we are recording right now satisfies part of my extension duties. We are talking with non-credit paying individuals about honeybees and beekeeping. Right. So there's a lot of ways to get information out through that, that okay. th those avenues. What, what is your research? So generally speaking in our lab at UF, we do kind of multiple categories of research. One of those is honeybee husbandry. So under that category is everything that deals with beekeeping related research. So honeybee disease and pest control, honeybee nutrition, impacts of pesticides on bees, honeybee health, honeybee management. If it's targeted at making healthier and more productive colonies, it falls under that honeybee husbandry category. The second category is we're starting to do a lot of honeybee ecology type work, studying honeybees where they are native. For example, right now I have a PhD student in South Africa studying wild populations of honeybees. So we, we really will study just about anything related to honeybees, but we kind of have these broad themes that we like to pursue. Is there any way for the general beekeeping public to access your research paper? So I'm, I'm taking off my beekeeping hat and put on my scientist hat. From a scientist perspe perspective, research does not exist until it's published in a refereed manuscript. So the goal of all of our projects, every study that we do is to carry it through to completion and then to publish to make it accessible to the masses. So of course, when we publish a research project, it's very full of scientific jargon. It's got a lot of science audiences. Remember, it's research teaching extension. The job of extension is to take that science, digest it, and feed it to the masses. So yes, we do make our research publicly accessible through standard research practices, but because of our research, or because of our extension responsibilities, we also deliver that information through podcasts, uh, in-person visits. I go around speaking to bee clubs all around the world. We answer emails, we make videos and fact sheets and on and on and on. All of that is a way to get our information, our research into the hands of beekeepers. Tell me a little bit about the state of beekeeping in the state of Florida. Yeah, so Florida is an amazing state. When I first got to Florida, there were about 1,100 registered beekeepers in the state. Now there's almost 5,000 beekeepers. So just in my 17 years here, I've seen it quadruple. And the same kind of goes with the number of colonies. There are about 150,000 registered colonies. Now there's almost 600, 700,000, depending on the year. So Florida is an amazing place to keep bees. But because of that, the density is quite high. We have a lot of commercial beekeepers. And our commercial beekeepers, Florida, people come to Florida for obvious reasons. It's warm, you keep bees alive easily through the winter. But all of those things that favor bees also favor bee diseases and pests. So while we have a huge robust bee population, we also have a lot of the standard issues that beekeepers everywhere have. Varroa, nutrition, queen related issues, forage, and in Florida specifically, we also have significant weather events. For example, hurricanes and things yeah. like that. It seems like as Florida goes with beekeeping, so does the rest of the country. Yeah, one of the key things to remember, if we really are managing six to 700, maybe even 800,000 colonies, we might have a third or a quarter of the nation's bees in our state at some point of time. And, and our commercial beekeepers are taking those bees everywhere to pollinate almonds, to pollinate blueberries, pollinate apples. And as a result, these issues that our beekeepers face are issues that all beekeepers face. Right. Yeah. And it's yeah. difficult here because I'll just pick on Varroa. 
because it's not cold, very cold during the winter, we always have brood in our colonies. Because we always have brood in our colonies, varroa populations are always going. And so it's little things like that that can make difficult beekeeping. But I will say, our beekeepers are amazing. I mean, you travel the world, beekeepers are amazing people. They overcome the problems, they face a lot of big issues in the industry, but they always find a way to make it through. Kind of like the critter that we study, right? I mean, that's, that's honeybees are amazing. I was saying, beekeepers were a special breed. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, doctor. It was a pleasure speaking with you today, and hopefully we'll talk again. Absolutely.